So I decided that I would start a new series here on YouTube um, done by me, Joe from Joe's Country Junction, to show you how to use those strips and actually make them into quilts. I think all of us get kind of paralyzed and stuck not knowing what we're gonna do with the strips or not knowing what to do with our scraps. Well, I'm gonna help you use them. And I'm super excited about that. So this is my little bucket here that I had of two and a half inch strips. And I've had them here at my kitchen island along with a mat. And I have been gradually working on using them. And what I've been using them on is I have an hourglass quilt started. This all started first, you can see it here. This all started from a blog reader sent me some UFO leftover pieces that they had started and put together into these hourglass blocks. Well, I thought, let's just keep the project going and I'll finish it if this, if this blog reader didn't wanna finish it. I was happy to finish it. And isn't it just, it's a very simple quilt, nothing tricky or fancy or anything like that. It's just a simple quilt, but I just love it. And one of the things I love best about doing a scrappy quilt, it's kind of a historical documentation of the scraps you have in your scrap user system at the time that you make your quilt. And so I always feel kind of, uh, I don't know, nostalgic when I start using some of my scraps and my strips because I can look at a print and I can say, oh, I don't remember this one. This one must have come from a blog reader where I can say, oh, I remember this one. This was the backing of a quilt I made. I just love scrap quilts for that very reason because they seem almost like a souvenir to me of the places I've been over the times before I actually got to making this quilt. So right now I'm still adding to this. I'm not done making it, but isn't it pretty? And if you don't wanna make a quilt like this for yourself, this is an awesome quilt that you can make for charity. So I am going to talk to you today and I am going to show you, I'm gonna set the quilt aside, that the thing that I use to do to make the quilt with is this companion angle ruler. And I have learned to love this companion angle ruler. I think a lot of you uh, sometimes get intimidated making triangles or pieces that are made from triangles because you're just not, you don't feel comfortable with drawing the line on the back and sewing a fourth inch from this side and a fourth inch from that side and then cutting it. It just seems kind of intense. It's not that way with a companion angle ruler. What happens is, is we're gonna take, and I'm gonna show you uh, more closely in a little bit, but I already, took the, my two inch strips, I laid the ruler out on them and I cut them and we end up with pieces like this. So really you're gonna turn this and you're gonna sew right here with your sewing machine. So you're not sewing at an angle, you're just turning your piece. You're gonna be sewing a straight line. So there's no need to feel intimidated. So we're gonna take the pieces. First, we're gonna take strips. We're gonna take the strips and we're gonna cut them into these triangles like this. And I'm gonna show you a quick and easy way to do that. And then we're gonna sew them together. We're gonna to get pieces like this, just like this. And then we're gonna iron them so that we have pieces like this. Then we're gonna flip them together, right sides together like this. And we're gonna sew here. And again, we're not sewing a triangle, we're just sewing a straight line. So there's no need to have fear or worry about that. And in the end, we're gonna get some blocks like this. And so that's what we're doing today. And I'm so glad that you're here to join me. I'm gonna flip the camera around and then we'll get right to it. See you in a bit. Okay, we're here at the cutting table. I have filmed this portion of the video. This is my third time. I'm hoping three times, the third time's the charm. Every time I go to do it, I um, end up not having it close enough for you to see, or I have it, um, my camera ends up tilting or my hands end up getting out of the video. So, okay, here we go. We're gonna try this again. I have these already cut. These are all previously cut from the previous videos. So um, be patient with me. So what we're gonna do is we have a piece like this and I put lay this down and I get another piece and we're gonna team these two together and we put them so that they're right sides together. And here we go, right sides together. They're ready to be cut. I'm going to take my companion angle ruler. I'm going to lay it right here 
so that you can see. And now I'm paranoid that you can't see, but well, hopefully you can. Um, so here, and I cut this side off first. And that will go into this pile I have right back here. And that pile is, I'll save those and use those for paper piecing at some point. And then I make my other cut here on the side, and that is my first cut. Then I'm going to flip my ruler like this. Oh, I'm gonna have to move this down a little bit because my camera stand is in the way. Okay, so here, and then I'm gonna flip my ruler like this. I'm gonna line it up right along there, along the edge of my two inch strip, and then I'm gonna cut right here. And so that gave me my first, oops, I need to sharpen my blade or get a new blade. So this is, these two pieces together will make the block that we're going to make, the hourglass block. So what's gonna happen at the machine, we're gonna go so from here down to here, and then these will open up like this, and they'll be ready to go. The beauty of using a companion angle ruler is, is that I won't have to, a lot of people when they do stuff, they cut them individually. And so then once they get to the machine, they have to pull, pick this one up, they have to pick this one up, they have to lay the two together like this, and then they have to run them through the machine. Me, I already have these together at the machine. And even if like this happens, all I have to do is like this, and they're already together and ready to go. I just can, you know, manipulate the fabric a little bit by squeezing and pinching. And so these are ready to go to the machine. And I'll show you how to make, um, you can continue cutting down the strip that you have started. You just plop your ruler on. And again, you're going to line up at the three inch line and you're gonna make a cut. And then you're gonna flip our ruler and then we're gonna cut on this side. Whoops, this is hard to, I only have about Oh, 12 inches workspace between this board and the camera, so it's hard to do. So I have another set cut and ready to go. Now I end up with a piece like this, and so what am I gonna do with that? For me, remember I said I do paper piecing, so I cut it in half and then I'm gonna put it in my paper piecing pile. And it looks like there's enough here to do one more, so I'm just gonna grab another strip of fabric. Um, here, this one looks small. I don't know if that one will work. Nope, that won't work because I need something to be a minimum of six and a half inches in order to use it. And so I'm just plinking around here, see if I can come up with one, a piece in my scraps. Oh, here's one I like. Let's use this one. Oh, this one was already used for a different piece. For I must have cut some other ones from this light strip already. So I'm gonna lay this on the bottom. I'm gonna actually flip it over because I like working and cutting this way instead. So the two pieces, they're sandwiched together. This already has a nice clean cut, so I'm not gonna recut it. And then I'm going to lay my ruler down, again using that three inch, or the three line right here. And I'm gonna make a cut, and then I'm gonna make another cut right here like this. Okay, and so that I have another set ready to go to the machine. If you want, you can double up and cut more uh, pieces at once. And so to do that, I'm gonna grab two pieces of fabric. Um, I gotta get a longer piece to do that to show you how I'm doing that. Okay, we'll take this one. This one's long. Um, I'm sorry you can't see what I'm doing off camera, but I can't be in two places at once. So I have two pieces here, and these are six and a half inches long. You can use a six and a half inch piece to be able to cut um, a block, and I'm gonna cut some other pieces. So you can layer these up. So here I have the blue piece. I'm gonna layer this cream piece, or this more neutral piece there. Then I'm gonna lay this one, and then I'm gonna do this. So they're all stacked together. I have four in the layer. I usually don't cut any more than four because um, it's just hard, the ruler's awkward. And so one cut, 
Another cut. This I'm going to put in my bucket. I do need a new blade. Well, this is an awkward angle to cut too. What is going on? Okay, there. I think that'll do it. Yep. And then I'm going to make the cut here, which I already did. And that one cut smoothly. So uh, then I can cut this next. And that way I cut two blocks at once, which saves a little time. But it does make for more uh, leftover scraps. So here we go. Uh, I've talked to you before and I've told you that I oftentimes work in my kitchen and when I'm working in my kitchen I might have um, all of these two and a half inch strips sitting here and then while the water is boiling in a pan of noodles I might um, cut out a half a dozen blocks and I kind of work I've been working on this project using that kind of method just kind of whenever I get some time I kind of um, just cut out a few blocks and that's been working really well for me. Um, oh, I've got a lot of pieces that aren't working, that aren't big enough. So I've been doing that in the sewing room as well. Like if I finish a project and I still have like 15 more minutes to sew, I'll just sew a few more blocks together. And it's been working out really well for me and the quilt has been growing. It's not growing quickly, but it's growing slowly. And that's okay. I'm really happy to um, have been given the chance to take on a blog reader's UFO project and make it or finish it up. I'm a big lover of Civil War prints and I oftentimes don't um, sew quilts for myself. I'm usually sewing them for charity or for a magazine production or something like that. And so it's, when I do get time to sew something for myself, I love it if it's Civil War prints. And this blog reader was just awesome to send this project to me because I've been using up lots of my Civil War scraps and making this quote bigger. I've got a nice little stack here now and I'll take you to the sewing machine and we'll sew those together. I'll show you how to do that. We'll be right back. Hi, it's Jill from Joe's Country Junction, and I am up in my sewing room now. I've been working on showing you how I've been making the blocks for my hourglass quilt that um, a blog reader sent me some UFO pieces for. And um, it was, the quilt was started, there was only a couple rows sewn together and enough to make a couple more rows. And so I measured the block and I cut up more pieces of my own and I've been gradually showing you how to uh, put the pieces together. I had some video clips before that I showed earlier in this video that showed you how to um, cut the pieces out of two and a half strips, two, two and a half inch strips using my companion angle ruler. And now I'm up at the sewing machine because I want to show you how to put them together. And um, so the pieces that we cut are already layered together. And that's one of the beauty of using a companion angle ruler. You can see that my pieces are here. You can see that they are together. And now I can just feed them through the machine. Um, what I do is I make sure that this corner that's already cut off goes through the machine first. And I use a quarter inch seam and I sew them through and I chain piece. So I just keep picking them up and sewing them and it's really uh, quite easy and relaxing sewing to do and after I get a normally I would um, sew this whole stack together but we're just here for a quick clip and so I'm gonna cut a couple of these off and I'm going to um, take them to my iron, which I have right here, and I'm going to iron them. Um, it doesn't, I'm going to, typically I iron the seam to the dark, but it doesn't really matter. So just a quick iron. Then I'm going to keep these two pieces that match together. And I'll do a couple more. And I am ironing to the dark. It happens to be in both of these cases. So from here, now I have two pieces that look like this and I will take them together 
and I will match the seam. I'll put them right sides together. So you can see I have them right sides together like this. And then I'm going to run them through the machine. Um, a lot of people might pin this right here, but I have been sewing for a long time and I use my fingers and I kind of wiggle my fingers back and forth and I can see that seam is nested because I sewed both, or when I ironed, excuse me, when I ironed both times, I ironed to the dark. So the, this seam is going to the dark and that seam is going to the dark. So then the seams do something that they call nesting. So that means they come right together tight. And so then I can take this and I can run this through the machine. I'm gonna take the other set I have here and I'm gonna take those. I'm gonna nest that seam right sides together and then I'm gonna put them through the machine. And I'll clip this set and iron that. Again, I'm gonna iron that one to the dark side. I'm gonna nest those two seams. And then I'm gonna put it through my machine using a quarter inch seam allowance. This is a quick and easy way um, if you're using a companion angle so that you don't have to draw a diagonal. There's a lot of people that when they design hourglass blocks that they have you cut pieces and then you have to draw a diagonal this way, you have to draw a diagonal this way, then you have to sew so far on each side of the diagonal, then you've got to clip it and then you've got to take them apart. And um, I don't like doing that. I like doing something that's pretty simple. And so I'm going to iron this open. I'm going to not iron it open, but I'm going to just iron it to one side. I'm going to iron this one to. And here you can see I have an hourglass block. I would go back and I would clip these corners like this so that they're ready to go into the quilt. And you can see that this will just pop right in and be another block in my quilt. Right now I'm doing really well. I have, um, oops, I gotta grab these. I have more blocks and more um, pieces sewn together. Right now I'm working on getting this quilt to be, I think 25 by 25. And so I've got some pieces sewn together. Once it comes time to sew them together, you can see how I'm using the dark is touching the light of the next block and the light is touching the dark. So I do every other block so that they are light, dark, light, dark. And then they are sewn into strips and then those strips are sewn onto the quilt. And I've been having so much fun doing that. I can't thank the blog reader who sent this to me enough. I've had such a fun time working on this quilt. It's been my, um, in between projects. So oftentimes I have like a big project that I'm working on and then I take some time and have a little project as well. And the little project um, is happens to be this. So I have a pretty busy life I, as you've known if you read my blog Joe's Country Junction. And um, I take a quilt like this and I take it downstairs and um, I might cut more blocks. I might get up in the morning early and sew a few pieces and then take the pieces downstairs and then during the day while I'm cooking or taking care of some of my grandkids, I might iron the pieces that I have and then the next day I might come back up and I might sew the two pieces together that I've already sewn the first part of. Um, it's just something that I can do in between projects. It makes me feel like I'm accomplishing something, even though it's just little baby steps at a time. And eventually it'll get to be a top and I just love it. Um, I'm a huge fan of using my scraps. I'm a huge fan of using, um, my favorite is Civil War prints. So you can imagine how I squealed when I saw this because a lot of the prints are Civil War prints or reproduction prints or even dated prints. So I've been having a lot of fun um, just working on the quilt and um, squeezing a few moments here and there to get the quilt made. And so I hope that that gave you a little idea of how I make my hourglass blocks and how I like it because it's so much easier when I use the companion angle ruler. And I'll put a link for that ruler down below. And um, 
Maybe you, if you haven't tried a companion angle ruler, you might want to try it because it really does A, help you use the strips that you already have been cutting. And if you missed my how to cut strips video, you might want to check that out because I have a video on that. And um, you can make these blocks however big you want to make them using your companion angle ruler. I happen to um, be making these small blocks. I think they finish at, hmm, I think they finish at three and a half inches. And so I've been using two inch strips to make them. But you can make, um, you can use your three and a half inch strip bucket and you could make the hourglass blocks bigger and your quilt will just get done a little bit faster. But I like it because these are already um, sandwiched together and they're already ready to go through the machine. I can just grab them, put them right through the machine. To me, it just seems so much easier. And anytime I can do something a little bit easier, I really like to do that. So thanks for joining me and I will put the video link below on how to cut scraps and I will put a link for the companion angle ruler down below as well. Uh, thank you so much for joining me in my sewing room. Um, it's been great having you here with me and I've had a great time telling you how I make my hourglass blocks. Have a good day. Bye.